As a parent in tech who also lives right in the heart of Brookhaven, I was so excited to have Andrew Hamilton, CTO Park Mobile, in studio to tell us about Brookhaven Innovation Academy. Take a look. Joining us, us this morning, Tatanya Jordan. Tatiana Jordan. Did I get the name right? Jordan. Tatanya. Tatanya. Okay. Tatanya. Right. It's Tatanya Jordan. Anything else in this place? It's I know it's really cool. <laughs> it's chill. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in to Connect today. I have Andrew Hamilton, and we are talking about something I am so excited about: Brookhaven Innovation Academy. And as somebody who lives in Brookhaven and has an eight-year-old, like captive audience. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'm glad you're, uh, you're you're looking forward to it. I'm yeah. sure. So, yeah, Brookhaven Innovation Academy has been open now for about a year and a half. Okay. So, uh, very excited about it. It's a K through seven school, and we're looking to extend that to K through eight in the 2018-2019 school year. So that will be fantastic. Um, obviously, we'd like to keep rolling and add grades as we can, but uh, you know we're, we'll work on that sometime in the future. Uh, currently, the school is located in Norcross, as we were talking about that a little bit earlier. It's a temporary location. Uh, it's a great place, but there's not much room for expansion, so it's going to be a challenge to get that eighth grade in there at this, at this point. But we'll, we'll make it work. We'll get it done. Yep. Yep. Children are very uh, adaptable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but in all seriousness, I, I really, I have so many questions. One, uh, is it a private school, public school, is it free? Like, It's a state charter school, okay. so anybody in the state of Georgia can go to the school and awesome. go on the waiting list for the school. There's awesome. a lottery process for okay. it. The school's actually full right now completely uh, with a 700 person waiting list. So it is uh, going well, it's got a great reputation and growing uh, you know, all the time. So, uh, but uh, the school is free. If you're a resident of the state of Georgia, uh, there are encouragements um, to the parents to participate, uh, both uh, with the time and effort, as well as uh, money as well, to make the school better. Uh, we do supply laptops and tablets to everybody at the schools. So all the students and all the teachers have devices, and they ha they can access those. Um, if I believe right, I think the early grades are sharing them still, but all the grades uh, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Sixth, seventh, or all um, have their own uh, laptops and tablets within the school that they can use. Wow! So it's great from that point of view. So really focus on science and technology, and you know the engineering side of things as well. I oh my gosh! I I just want Jackson to go there right now. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. So I have so many questions, but I guess first and foremost, how long had this been an idea? before it became a reality. Absolutely. So I've been on the board of directors now for two years, uh, just over two years. And when I started, the um, charter had just been signed. So it was in place just around about the time that I started. I believe it was about two years prior to that um, that the process was started to get the charter. Uh, so it is a long process, um, but I'm sure other people have been th thinking about it for years before that too. So it's definitely not something that you just say, hey, I'm going to open up a charter school and you sign a charter and you're good to go. It is a process and it takes a while to get through that. Even, even towards the end of it, finding a location, a facility that's suitable, affordable, getting the right technology into the building, being able to open on time. I mean, all those factors are you know, just always on the go, constantly. Wow. So definitely a long process. It's not something that just happens overnight. And for those who, who don't know or maybe have heard the term but don't quite get what it means, what is a charter school? How does it, it's a public school but it's not. It is a public school. Um, it gets funded uh, from state money uh -huh. in our case because we're a state charter uh, school, so we get funded from the Georgia State Charter Association mm -hmm. and from the state. So actually, the state of Georgia is paying us um, a amount of money for every child that is enrolled within the school. So we use that money to fund the facilities, pay for the teachers, pay for technology, and really make the school operate. Um, the money that we get from the state is probably not as much as public schools get necessarily, but you know we've done extremely well with our funds and really careful about how we use those funds. Yeah, well, I mean, we have great parents on the board. Yes, it helps. we do. Yes, we do. Really that's, helps. Uh, that's been fantastic. We do have parents on the board. Uh, we have a few uh, board members that do not have uh, children within the school too, so there's kind of a, a good mix. Uh, but we have educators, we have technologists, we have financial people. I mean, we have 
an operating board that has all the skill sets that we need to be successful. Wow. And uh, just to be frank, I'm very, very happy where Jackson is right now. <laughs> but as somebody who loves technology, yeah. loves startups, right? Like this is, this it's is a beautiful. Yeah. It's really, yeah. really cool. And yeah. you're focused on STEM. Yeah. And you know, the state of Georgia has a negative 2% unemployment rate uh, when it comes to technology careers. There are literally not enough people in our state to fill all the jobs that are out there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we're talking a little bit about my background. Yeah. Um, but you know, I went to a technical college uh, when I was uh, growing up. So during my time at traditional school, I had a really hard time um, thinking about how to apply subjects like mathematics and science and engineering uh, without seeing the project around it. So one of the things that the school does, Brookhaven Innovation Academy, is create projects for the kids to work around so they can see how to apply mathematics and science and uh, technology all at the same time to an end goal. So you're not just studying mathematics, you're not just studying technology, you're not just studying science, you're seeing how all these aspects can come together to create a working project. So that's really a big difference. Um, I felt that once I went to technical college, I, I received that same understanding of how all these pieces came together and how mm -hmm. they could be used uh, to, towards your future career and uh, to com completion of projects as well. So, you know, it, it really does train kids to use the tools around them and the subjects at the top. Well, it's just, it, it makes me chuckle a little bit because when you have a certain type of child who is very headstrong and always wants to know why, right. they don't want to just take it at face value and be just super compliant. They want to know why. Right. And exactly. that translates into why am I learning fractions? What right. has that got to do with my life right now? Yep. Yeah, totally agree. As yeah. you can see the practicalities of it, that you know, half of something or a third of something or a quarter of something, uh -huh. and see how it's applied in a project, then they'll absolutely get it. But it just sense. being told you've got to study and learn and repeat these things is not necessarily interesting to them either. One thing that we learned when we were going through this process is that the little kids aren't actually that good with tablets, which is unusual. So huh. especially if they've got to type a lot and do different things, it's just not as easy to use. So the notebooks are actually more uh, useful for the kids as they start to learn to type projects and to answer questions, etc. So, but we have fantastic software. Uh, they're using Rosetta Stone, uh, using uh, Tinker for the uh, coding side of it. If anything, that's one part that we, we're still working on is getting some of the, the younger kids to learn coding as well mm -hmm. as some of the older kids. So we're working through that. Uh, they have great infrastructure at the school, so everybody can get out onto computers. Uh, we have, you know, at any one point, there could be 400 devices connected, so you know, the infrastructure has to be strong and it has to be capable. So that's and actually safe. a lot more than, than a lot of people have in, you know, in their, in their businesses. Yeah. So it's, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and wow. safety as well. Yeah. So you, you've got to have great content uh, filtering and content management. So that's part of it too. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the things you don't really think about that much, but the telephone system um, still has to be really strong and resilient because we use that as a paging system for the school too. Wow, wow, so many things go into. A lot of things to think about. Yeah, it's not <laughs> like it was way back in the day. It's like, oh, it's a schoolhouse. Yeah. And just yeah. walk right in. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But great technology and growing all the time, constantly adding new programs for them to use and. Uh, different learning software, uh, Google Classrooms. So we just started using Google Classrooms uh, for this season, and I believe it's going extremely well. I'm going to go up to the school at some point soon and see it in use. Uh, wow. But Google Classrooms is something that um, both the public schools and now Brookhaven Innovation Academy are using it as well. So I'm going to put you on the spot here, but could I maybe come see it with you sometime? Yeah, And get absolutely. like an insider tour? Yeah, take the tour, absolutely. You heard it yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. that'd I'm be fantastic. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I, want to, I would definitely want to take a look and yeah. just there's just something really special when you have a bunch of children together in a learning environment. Lots yeah. of hope, lots of fun, lots of chaos, yeah. but, but it's just great. Kids yeah. are awesome. Yeah. Um, we both know about the challenges that are particularly facing women in technology. Yep. And, you know, young women, girls, teens, tweens start out thinking they can do everything and anything but then life gets really real and uh, it's just not always as easy. Um, and there yeah. are a lot of uh, barriers that are becoming more and more obvious, but how does Brookhaven Innovation Academy you know, create a level playing field for all sexes? Yeah, and there is there's, you know, no difference in how, how people are taught or people are, are 
you know, brought into the school, so that helps a lot. Um, it is a level playing field as far as the school is concerned. Everybody has access to the tools, um, you know, so that's fantastic. I mean, generally I've seen, you know, in my, I have twins, yeah. <laughs> a little old boy and a girl, and they do learn differently. Mm -hmm. So, you know, adapting and having uh, learning that adapts to individuals, regardless whether it's a boy or a girl or, or something just different, um, that's a big part of the school as well, is individual-based learning to wow. make sure that people are, are brought um, up through the school at their own pace and learning at their own pace as well. So that's a big aspect of this. You that's know, really boys cool. and girls do learn differently in, yeah. my, in my experience. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure that's the same for everybody. Um, but uh, you know, it, it, they do have to be taught slightly differently sometimes. Well, and just or every, individuals have to be taught every differently. Every human is different, Every right? human is different, um, yes. You know, we're, we're at 3CI yeah. right now, and one thing I love that 3CI does is a Colby assessment. Yes. They, you know? Yes. <laughs> I'm familiar with it. Yes! Like, they literally enable <laughs> yeah. you to be free. Free to be me. You know? It's like, I'm a, you know, 2468. I'm not, really. But right. it's right. when you look up Colby, you'll see what I'm talking about. And it really highlights this is the way I am hardwired. This yeah. is my human hardware. Yep. And this is how I will operate best. Absolutely. And so, how do you guys, how do you discover that and optimize that with the, a younger group of children? Yeah, that's a, that's a good, you know, definitely a good question. Um, but, you know, just that individual learning plan uh -huh. and having the ability to not force everybody to learn everything the same way, yeah. but have slightly different ways to teach people of different abilities. You know, is key. It's, There's so much freedom in that. Yeah. Whether you're yeah. a kinetic learner, a visual yeah. learner, an auditory processor. Yeah, absolutely. And you mentioned about uh, you know uh, women in the workplace mm -hmm. today. I've seen a change in the last couple of years. I'm seeing a lot more people coming through. Um, you know, women, females coming through for interviews, getting jobs successfully. I am seeing a change over the last few years. When I first started off 25 years ago. It was extremely rare to have females in the technology workspace, and that is absolutely improved. I'm not sure if it's you know a combination of women in technology, uh, Georgia Tech encouraging a lot of uh, people to come through their system as well. But there's definitely a change in the last few years in a positive way. Good. That is yeah. so good to hear. And let's let's just keep supporting organizations and companies that that are pouring into women in tech and, and children in tech, yes. you know? Yes, and that's you know? key as well. Yeah. yeah. My daughter loves to code. She loves, she's done some web design already. Awesome. She's done some, yeah, she's, she loves it. So she's really enjoying it. And it's so cool. Like, yeah. you know, Jackson talks about, I want to make a video game. Well, 20 years ago, you know, good luck with that eight-year-old. Today, right. it's, it's definitely a possibility, yeah. you yeah. know? My daughter, Summer, she went to a uh, coding camp a couple of years ago over the summer, like a camp, um, summer camp for a week, um, literally to learn how to do game design awesome. and coding. So that was awesome. fantastic. Yeah. I My son's that. on the other side. He likes to test the games. Well, right. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, we had a book fair this morning at Jackson School, and in addition to books, uh, he had to buy this poster that said Game On, and it just had, you know, controllers. So we yeah. are we are there. That's where we are yeah. in yeah. parenting right now. Awesome. Um, if people want to learn more about Brookhaven Innovation Academy, where do they go? Uh, go to brookhaveninnovationacademy.org and take a look at it. The website's uh, getting updated. It's a slightly older version of it right now, but there's still a lot of information on there. And uh, when you're... As we said, we're updating it. There's going to be an application as well at some point soon. Um, so all the information will be on BrookhavenInnovationAcademy.org. Awesome. And don't be discouraged by the fact that there is a 700 child wait list because, like you said, it's a, it's a lottery. It is a lottery, system. yeah. So, yeah. like, anybody can get in yeah. at any time. So if that appeals to you, definitely look at it. I know I'm going to. Yeah. And we did have some new news. Uh, we had a capital campaign run uh, to fund the deposit for a new location. So that new location has been chosen. Oh. It's in Shambly, not quite Brookhaven, but it's right on the border on Shallowford Road. Awesome. So very excited about that. It's going to be a while. It's going to be 2019 to 2020 uh, school year. So very exciting, but it is going to take a while. It's still going to take a lot of perseverance to get the building, get uh, the architecture in place, continue to raise funds and make it work. But it's going to be fantastic to have that custom location within the uh, perimeter. Awesome. So and, very excited about that. And so that website, does that have a donate button on it? If it doesn't, it should. <laughs> <laughs> and I will take care of that. Okay, good. Awesome. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks for reminding. Yeah. All right. Andrew Hamilton, Andrew Hamilton, Park Mobile, CTO, board member, Brookhaven Innovation Academy. 
dad of twins, and just general awesome human. Thank you so much for <laughs> being here. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's always great to be here with 3CI as well. <laughs>